You probably clicked here because of a data breach, whether you want to prevent one or you were caught in one. And I hope you didn't buy a credit monitoring service because you won't need it. And we'll talk about why later. In this video, I'm going to share how to make sense of your data that was exposed, what you can do to sleep well at night, and most importantly, how to prevent it from happening again. I'm Henry from TechLore and we are your digital rights resource to make it fun and approachable. So let's get down to business after a quick message from our sponsor. I bet you use email. And if you're still using Gmail, Yahoo, or another insecure email provider that collects your data and might even use it for ads, you'll love the sponsor of this video, Startmail. Startmail doesn't collect or track your personal information with some of the world's strictest privacy regulations and an awesome list of features like unlimited email aliases, email encryption with a password to add a massive layer of security to your sensitive emails, custom domain support so you own your email, burner aliases, and many other features to not just keep you safe, but keep you enjoying your email provider. It's one of my personal favorite interfaces for any email client. It's beautiful, and if you have an already established workflow, it integrates with your already existing email clients like Apple Mail, Thunderbird, or Outlook. The best part is migrating can be done in just a few clicks from your current provider, and for a limited time, Startmail is offering a massive 50% discount on both monthly and annual plans. Sign up at the link on the screen and in the description to start protecting your data today and actually own your emails. So first you need to understand what data was exposed. This is crucial for your next steps to assess the real risks that you're up against. You should start by making a list of data points that were definitely exposed and then ones that may have been exposed. To figure this out, start with official press coverage and or announcements made by the breached company. Let's say you were notified by Ticketmaster regarding their data breach. If you find their announcement, you'll see it included phone number, encrypted credit card information, as well as some other personal information. So what you'd write is phone number, credit card info, and then maybe we may include Ticketmaster email, first and last name, and billing address in the maybe section. The most common data points you'll find will include the following. From there, you want to do an email search on a site like Have I Been Pwned to check for data breaches, and I'd recommend setting up notifications for your core emails because you don't always get the full story from the person who actually gave you the announcement. You also want to keep up with coverage of your data breach. Not too long ago, billions of people had their social security numbers leaked, and I got a lot of signal messages about this, and a pen tester was the site specifically for that one data breach that you could use to see if you were part of that breach. So every breach is different, and so I'd suggest having a way to keep up with the latest news and updates. Completely shameless plug, uh, but I do co-host a weekly podcast where every week begins with a data breach section where we put in the work of doing the research for you and giving you the takeaways. I'll leave a link to that below. In the next section, we're gonna go through every data point, and you're gonna start with things that are definitely impacted by you and that are important. And then from there, you're gonna do things that are in the maybe section. So I'm gonna lay out what to do with each exposed data point now. Use the chapters to skip around to the data point that you have been impacted by. And within each data point, I'll be going from generally easy to hard, which also kind of corresponds with must do all the way to should and can do. To be thorough, you should always contact the breached provider themselves to see if they have any more specific advice for you because every data breach can be a little bit different. The first critical thing you need to do is update the password on the breached account to prevent unauthorized access. Very simple starting point. From there, you need to make sure you're not reusing your breached password. A tactic hackers use is called credential stuffing, where they take passwords from one data breach and try that same password on your other accounts. This targets people who reuse passwords. Myself and many security experts are proponents of safe password managers. We have password manager recommendations in another video as well as on our website. And since that video is made, I've been using ProtonPass and loving it. I'll leave a link to that review as well. If you don't like password managers, just make sure you have a system for saving secure and unique passwords. The final step to maximize protection is to enable multi-factor authentication for your breached accounts and other sensitive accounts like your email. TOTP is the multi-factor method where you scan a QR code and is a great starting point because it's pretty secure. 
We made a whole dedicated guide explaining TOTP. Since that video was made, Ente Auth has been released, which is open source and an encrypted cross-platform and is my favorite service to use for this. The more services that you enable MFA for, the better, but at least try to cover your most sensitive accounts and get that set up because it's pretty darn important. The first thing to do with a leaked email is to make sure your security for the breached account is safe. Make sure that you update your password and enable any multi-factor security options on the breached account. Go back to the password section for password security advice. The second thing you should do is make sure you secure your email account itself. Email accounts are super valuable because they're a central location for many of your other sensitive accounts. To do this, make sure you're not reusing passwords and make sure you use MFA on your email account. You also wanna be cautious with any phishing attempts when someone fakes a website to get you to give them your password. Since your email became public, hackers can target you directly. So you need to be aware that you could get direct attacks targeted to your email inbox. The third thing gets more advanced and is not for everybody, but it's to compartmentalize emails for different things, the extent of which will vary. Some people prefer a minimal approach where they have one email for their most sensitive accounts like banks, and then they have a second email for the rest of their accounts that are less important, and then a third email for just spam and whatever. This kind of like bucket approach is a nice convenient way to add a layer of separation between your accounts so that way you, know, you can implement just the strictest security protocols on your most important email account. With that said, some people like myself prefer to ditch this bucket method and instead make it so every single account gets its own email. Impossible. It seems like a lot of work, but there are aliasing services that make this pretty easy. As I said in the password section, I'm using ProtonPass, which auto-generates aliases, which forward to my normal email inbox per website. Homer? Who is Homer? My name is Guy Incognito. If your email alias is ever breached or someone shares it with a third party, you know exactly who's responsible. So that's also another benefit to this. Services that do aliasing include Proton Pass, Simple Login, Addy.io, and there are many other services like the sponsor of this video, Startmail, who offer unlimited aliases as well. Now that hackers know your phone number, you may receive texts or calls with the goal of getting more information from you or just getting you to use a phishing website. So that's step one, just be alert. Next up, I'd suggest logging into your phone's cell account and making sure you utilize every security option available to you. Go back to the password section regarding secure passwords and MFA solutions. From here, we recommend calling your cell provider to see if they offer additional protections against SIM swap attacks. SIM swap attacks are when somebody impersonates you and convinces your cell company to reissue your number to them, allowing them to intercept all of your messages and calls, including things like verification codes. So call your cell provider and see what they can do to help you. Another small but minor step is to avoid phone number based accounts when you can. Many providers allow you to use an email instead of a phone number. So do that when possible. It's much easier to change emails than phone numbers. And from here, phone numbers are going to look a lot like the email section of this video, using buckets to compartmentalize numbers for different things. The general buckets for most people I've found to be pretty successful are a phone number for communicating with friends and family, a phone number for your accounts, and then a spam phone number for just everything else. Services like Google Voice and MySudo can make this a lot easier and affordable so you don't have to buy three different cell plans. What you can do with your social is both free and takes you a long way without ever needing a credit monitoring service. I hope I didn't blow your mind, but if I did, I will explain soon. First, freeze your credit. I'll say that again, freeze your credit. This stops anyone from opening a new line of credit under your name, meaning that you will need to actively remove the credit freeze each time you wanna open a new credit card or apply for a loan which hopefully you're not doing every week. It has no drawbacks, has no impacts to your credit score, and all it does is keep you safer. What you do is you go to the three credit bureaus and create an account with them. From there, you freeze your credit file, and then you call it a day and go out and walk your dog. All three have temporary credit lifts for when you want to apply for new credit, so you can set it for just a day, and everyone should do this. It's probably the most important thing in this video, and in my opinion, it should be a default. From there, set up alerts on your credit file and make sure it's always you who is responsible for anything happening. 
I'd also recommend planting your flag and setting up official government accounts that use your social security number so you can claim the accounts before a hacker can. And now many people ask us about credit monitoring services. And here's the spiel you've been waiting for. So we're generally opposed to them. And the reason for that is they don't tend to do anything that services like Have I Been Pwned, which we talked about earlier. Credit monitoring services at best generally just take your money and at worst expose you to additional risks like their own data breaches. That's embarrassing. The only two things a credit monitoring service might provide that you can't get yourself are a dedicated support agent if you need help in an emergency and you want someone who's paid to help you. And then some offer liability insurance if you think that they'll pay you in a situation where you experience financial loss. None of those are guaranteed and none of these should happen in the first place if you follow most of the things in this video. Payment information is pretty important and I don't have to give you that many selling points outside of it's gonna cost you. The first thing I recommend is trying to avoid debit cards online when you can. Credit cards do make it a lot easier to dispute and reverse transactions in a bad situation. From there, services like Apple Pay and Google Pay do a single layer of obscurity with your card number, which does help a lot with basic data breaches. You also wanna be cautious with who you give your payment information to in the first place. Make sure they're reputable businesses, and if you have second guesses, use gift cards, either native gift cards, like an Amazon gift card on Amazon, or you can get a non-reloadable prepaid Visa gift card to use on sites you have less faith in. Payment processors like PayPal are also good when you don't trust the site itself to handle your card information. Finally, what I do is a mix of Something that's really powerful and also convenient is I use privacy.com. This video is not sponsored by them, but they're awesome for this. They pretty much let you generate dedicated cards as well as burner cards for every site. Recently, there was this mysterious transaction thing going on that likely came from a data breach. I was actually impacted by this, uh, but fortunately I was using a privacy.com card and uh, that was the one that was caught in that. And I already closed the card, so it simply was not a concern. Breached home address is a tricky one. Fortunately, most people, again, most people don't need to be super concerned with a breached home address unless they're a person of interest. Most hackers are concerned with easy targets like people reusing passwords. With that said, let's dive into some steps for those of you who are concerned. First, keep an eye on online people directories and people searching websites to make sure your address stays off of them. We'll have a guide sometime in the future on how to opt out of data search websites. There's a lot of drama going on and there's a lot of unclear things happening right now with data removal services. So once we get more info on that, we'll hopefully have a guide on that. Second is to be cautious of suspicious mail that like phishing attacks online or trying to get sensitive information from you. From there, we suggest basic home security, like improving your locks, setting up alarms on your windows, being careful with package thefts, setting up cameras, and doing whatever you can to improve the security of your home. Finally, I do recommend setting up a mailbox that's away from your home that you use for anything that doesn't require a residential address. Personally, I go on Yelp and type in private mailbox in my area, and that gives me results for local areas that offer a mailbox. This allows you to keep where you live off of substantially more websites, so that way people just get your mailbox instead of where you live. With all of that out of the way, I've wanted to consolidate 10 prevention steps, that most of which you've already covered, but there are a few new ones, and I wanted to just give this to you in one easy to take away package. I'm gonna spitball, so have your pen and paper ready. If you do these 10 things, you either don't have to deal with data breaches in the first place, or you don't have to deal with anywhere near as much of an impact. Freeze and monitor your credit. It's the most important thing in this video. We covered this earlier in the social security number section. Use a password manager or another method of securely storing unique passwords for each website. Utilize multi-factor authentication as often as possible, opting for more secure versions of MFA like TOTP instead of your phone number. Close accounts you no longer use. Digital minimalism goes a long way and the less data and accounts that you own, the better. And on that note, use services that go out of their way to collect less data about you. Less data collected is less data to secure, so be wary of people asking for too much information. For emails, I recommend having multiple emails for different things. On a basic level, at least have an email for accounts separate from spam and separate from the one that you use for communication. 
but ideally you're using an email aliasing service like the ones I covered earlier in the video. Similarly, your phone number is something you should try to compartmentalize across a few different numbers. We discussed strategies for doing this earlier in the video, and you also wanna make sure your phone number is locked down as well, because it's a really important thing to lock down. Make sure you're being careful with your payment information online, opt to use credit cards, Apple Pay, PayPal, gift cards, or ideally an aliasing service will really take you to the next level, like privacy.com. Make sure all of your devices and software run the latest software with security patches. And finally, big one, keep backups. In a worst case scenario, someone can lock you out of sensitive data. Imagine if your iCloud account was breached and you lost access to it, what would you do? Or someone could infect your computer with ransomware. Keep safe backups, you never know what could happen, and you're never going to regret keeping a good, solid backup. With all that said, I hope that you feel empowered. This is all a spectrum, so if you only take care of the basics, that's completely okay. And there's always gonna be more that you can do down the road. Now, my goal is for you to find the best compromise between safety and convenience, and I hope that the layout for this video allowed you to make that choice for yourself. The work you put in today can save yourself literally months of headache in the future. So don't underestimate how much of your work right now can pay off down the road. I wanna also mention our forum, discuss.techler.tech. If you have any more specific questions or you feel like you're in a tough situation, uh, this is a community that we created uh, to help people like you. So it's all open source, self-hosted by ourselves, and it's free to join. Um, thanks to people like our Techlorians who are now able to support our uh, forum and also gain access to exclusive parts of the forum and gain access to our private signal community, as well as people on Patreon who are helping us support all this free content for you, as well as letting us host our communities. I also wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Startmail. And if you wanna check out another video from us, I made a video here about digital minimalism and what my phone looks like to give you some insight into how far you can kind of take the minimalism route of things. So check out that video. We'll see you next time on TechLore. Thank you for watching and go kill it out there and keep yourself safe.